How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be going over light tween, how to use tweening in Construct 2, and we're going to be making some widescreen functionality, just kind of faking some widescreen. I think it's very popular in a lot of games and I like to have it this way. It's very easy to add and this way we get to go over tweening. It's something that we did in the live stream with the HUD and we actually kind of had some fun with it, so if you haven't seen that go check out that video. But what is tweening and why we need it? So tweening, if you don't know, is taking two positions and it's animating the in-betweens. That's why it's called tween itself. And it's making it look fluid. And by the end of it, you can actually control more than just the space in between. You can actually control the speed in between. You can control the arc in between as well. And basically what it gives us is ultimate control over animating our objects. So if you've ever seen if you've ever seen something in a game that moves in a way that you have no idea how to program, that's because it's a tween. So what we're going to be doing is using light tween, which is probably one of the more consistent Construct 2 plugins, which is why I don't mind using it and telling you to use it as well. Uh, and that way, you know, I really try hard not to use plugins whatsoever because I think they can become uh, unstable very quickly. Uh, and we already, we don't want to rely on anything else that could potentially damage our project, but Light Tween has proven itself to be pretty stable for Construct 2. So that being said, here's Light Tween. I'll leave a link in the description. Make sure you download this and install it as a normal plugin. But what I really want to make clear to you is it doesn't matter what program you're using or if you're using a native language because GameMaker has its own tweening system. Unity has their own tweening system, and it's all free. Even things like XNA have their own tweening system. So it's pretty universal here. And to that point, all of the tweens that we're going to be using are pretty universal. There's this website called easings.net, where if I put my mouse cursor over this, you can actually see the tween with that red arrow, what the motion will look like when you apply it to that object. So obviously these are pretty much the slower tweens, but if I go down here, you can see some of the crazier ones where there's an in, like a pull back, and then it, it looks elastic. That one's pretty cool. Um, the bounces are usually my favorite ones because they just, they look really, really nice. Uh, but there's a lot you can mess around with, and all of these can be combined into making something cool. And then there's a linear tween, which is just from point A to point B with no thrills. Uh, we're actually going to be using a linear tween because that's pretty much how you make a widescreen kind of view uh, show up. So here's what we're going to do. I already have the, pro the project set up with our player. If I hit play here, I should be able to walk left and right just like you've normally seen. Uh, if I go to layout two, which is going to be my global layout, this is where I would put my HUD. We, we just did this last week. We did this in the live stream. I've given myself these two tiled backgrounds that are going to pop in and they're gonna act as a widescreen, or I guess what there's probably other words for it. I'm just thinking widescreen. It kinda of is like the perfect cutscene maneuver because they kinda of crops you in, and your player controls can like stop altogether, you can be disabled, and then it forces the user to actually pay attention to what's going on in the game. So what I've done here is I put it on a layer called bars. I need to make sure that this layer is global to the entire project. I need to make sure that the parallax rate is at zero and zero, just like a HUD element. And since we are going to be scaling our layout, uh, we need to make sure that this is disabled so it will scale with us. Uh, the only other thing is make sure that this is uh, transparent. So make sure that's turned on. Otherwise, it'll overlay over your entire game. Let's lock this for right now. Actually, no, let's unlock that. Let's go back over here and let's add that layer. So because it's global, now I can just add this in. Yes, it's overridden as a global layer and I can lock it and now it's added to the project. Okay, pretty cool. So this is what we need to do. So on layout two here, oh, I guess if I lock it on both layers, it, it locks. Um, what I need to do is I need to go here to my top bar. These are two separate objects. I need to add in the light tween behavior. So I just go to behaviors add the light tween behavior. Now right out of the box, the light tween behavior is active, so it's automatically going to tween to this position with the ease out bounce, which is one of the uh, motions that we went over or that we saw uh, at this target location at 100 by 100. So it's automatically going to look really cool, but let's actually control it a little bit more to where we want it to be. And what we want to do really is we want to control when it's active or not. So I'm going to turn this off and I actually have to drop this down because there's a few other options. 
Uh, I'm going to tween the position. I'm going to use the linear tween so it's just very smooth. And I'm going to tween this to 0, 0. So 0, comma 0, because that's where I want this to go, right there. Um, but I want to make sure this will not tween if I leave it at 0, 0. This will only tween if I put it elsewhere. If I put it up here, then it'll tween down like this. Uh, and that gets more into the duration, which I'm going to put at 0 0.5. So it'll be very fast tween. And these I can just leave as default. So I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom bar. I'm going to add the light tween behavior. I'm going to turn the active on start to no. I'm going to make it a linear tween. And I'm going to have the target be, what position is this? 320 by 192. So that's what I'm going to do. 320 by 192. Uh, I'm going to put this to 0 0.5. OK, so now our tween is done. But because we've turned off both of these to be active on start, uh, they're not actually going to do anything. So if I played this game, uh, unless I did something wrong, they won't show up whatsoever. So how do we want to make them show up? I'm going to lock our bars layer, and on our players layer, player layer, I'm going to make a new sprite. I'm going to make it 32 by 32, and I'm just going to make it a rectangle that we can overlap. Actually, I'm going to put the origin of this to the bottom, so we can actually snap it down to the bottom. Let's call this object widescreen bars. <laughs> yes, object widescreen bars. All we, we, all we need to do is overlap this. So in our event sheet, let's add the event for our player mask to overlap our widescreen bar object. And if it does, what we're going to do is we're going to make a sub event here. And we're going to trigger this once because we don't want it to co constantly start the tween. We just want it to start the tween once. So on the top bar, let's go here. You can see that light tween adds its own actions here. And let's just hit start. And let's just hit done because we don't need to mess with anything else. Let's copy and paste this and hit R on the keyboard to replace it with the bottom bar. And now both the top bar and the bottom bar are activated if we're overlapping. If we are not overlapping, so let me hit X on this event to make an else statement. If we're not overlapping, let's go to the top bar here. Now, technically what we could do is we could set the target back to the X location that it was originally at outside of the layout. But what's even easier is I can actually just hit reverse. I can literally just say reverse from the current position to the position that it was originally at. So I can copy and paste this again. I can hit R on the keyboard as well and just flip that with the bottom bar. So now they're gonna go to uh, the position we want them to, their target position, and if we're not overlapping, they're going to reverse. So let's hit play, and let's go and do that. Just like that, and if I walk away, they come back, or they, they go away. Let me actually make this so the Z order is correct here. Let's just move the Z order to the bottom of the layer so my player can be over that. Let's hit play. And there we go. Cool. So now we have our widescreen effect. But obviously, this doesn't quite cut it all the way. And you can see, I mean, there's things that you'd have to mess around with. You have to do a timer or something like that. You'd have to disable the player controls. You'd have to let your cutscene play. There's a lot of other things that you'd want to add in addition to this. This is me showcasing to you how we can use tweens. And as a bonus, we're going to actually scale the layer so or scale the layout. So let's go to System, Start of Layout. And let's add this in here. So by default, it's at 1. That's the layout scale. Uh, I'm going to set the layout scale. Let's set the, let's type in layout scale. I'm going to set the layout scale to 0 0.5. So let's actually hit play. And now you'll, you can see that we're way zoomed out, right? Uh, we're, we're more zoomed out than we were before is the best way I can explain it. Uh, but because we have our scale rate turned off on the bars layer here, they're still going to maintain their aspect ratio. This is still going to look just fine. Uh, but here's what we want to do. When we actually overlap this, why don't we scale it in, right? Why don't we go back to one? And that way we can, or we can do it the opposite way around. You can scale out. Uh, it really doesn't matter. So what we're going to do here when we're overlapping, we're going to linear interpolate or lerp which we've done for our camera between our layout scale. So let's go to our layout scale. And what we're going to do is we're going to lerp between the layout scale that is current, so 0 0.5, to the target layout scale that we want, which is going to be 1. And we're just going to use 0 0.05 at the moment. We don't need to get into doing anything with delta time or anything like that. This should work pretty fine. 
So I'm going to copy and paste this because if we're not overlapping, then I want to go back to 0.5. So again, we have our layout scale, which is now one, our target, which is going to be now 0.5. And this 0.05 is the speed as to which it's going to linear interpolate between. So let me hit play here. And now when I go like this, you can actually see it interpolate and scale in and out. So now we actually have a little bit of a camera object, I guess you could call it. This is the, the beginning of a camera object. There's a lot more to do with this, uh, but I hope that this gives you uh, a foundation to start making cutscenes on and just to mess around with tweens in general. They're very easy. They're very good for polishing up your games. There's a lot that we're going to have to get into with that, but I'm really excited to do that. So I really do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. Comment below if you want to see more tutorials like this or if you enjoyed this tutorial. Also join the Facebook group if you haven't already and check out my new bootcamp company. I'm really excited about it. I already talked about it a lot on the live stream. So if you haven't signed up for the bootcamp, it's coming out in the summer. Make sure that you are on the registration list because only 10 people will be admitted into the first session. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander, and I'll see you next time.